Good morning, everybody, and Happy New Year to you all. Welcome to uh, Heal Lane this morning, and uh, a special welcome to Heather, who joins us as well. So, welcome to you and your family. So, uh, yeah, thank you for joining us this morning, and we look forward to what Heather's going to bring later on. Let's just uh, pray before we uh, go any further. Dear Lord, we just uh, thank you that as we uh, welcome in the new year, Lord, that we know that uh, you're always here for us yesterday, today, forever, Lord. You're, you'll always be the same. You'll always be there for us. We just pray that you'd be with those who are unable to uh, join us this morning, Lord, wherever they are, that they would know your hand on their lives. We just pray that as we come to worship you this morning, Lord, that you can Bless us and fill us anew as we head out for a new week and a new year, Lord, to give glory and praise to you, Lord. Amen. Okay, we're going to start uh, by joining together and singing Lord for the Years. Lord, for the years your love has kept and guided, urged and inspired us, cheered us on our way, sought us and saved us, pardoned and provided, Lord of the years, we bring our thanks today. For that word, the word of life which fires us, speaks to our hearts and sets our souls ablaze, teaches and trains, rebukes us and inspires us, Lord of the word, receive your peace. generation spirits oppressed by pleasure wealth and care for young and old for commonwealth and nation Lord of our land be pleased to hear our prayer Lord for Word, where men disown and doubt you, love less in strength and comfort less in pain, hungry and helpless, lost indeed without you, Lord of the world, we pray that Christ may reign. In living power, remake us. Self on the cross and Christ upon the throne. Past but behind us, for the future take us. Lord of our lives, to live for Christ alone. Okay, just to highlight a, a few notices, um, just to, to say that the so there's still slips on the table out there for nominations for a new leader. So if you're able to, if you haven't done so, then you can fill that out today and put it in the, the box. That'd be good. Thank you. Um, and then also just to highlight that the, so Stella Palfrey's funeral will be here on Saturday at 12 o'clock. Um, so that's for yeah for anybody who's w- wants to come along to that one. Um, I think that was the only extra notices we had um, today. 
So I just thought as we with the start of a new year, um, we'd uh, quite often people look back, don't they, on the last year and think, oh, has it been a good year, a bad year? And then maybe look forward to what they've got to come in the, this coming year. So I thought I'd go around the room, maybe we'll start with the younger ones, see, um, is there anything that you're hoping for this year that you're looking forward to? Something exciting that might be happening. Has anybody got any? Go on, Jess. Digging up the floor in the barn. That does sound exciting, doesn't it? <laughs> Daniel didn't look quite as excited. <laughs> but that is, yeah, something to look forward to, Jess. Yes, yeah. Charlotte? Summer holidays. Oh, yeah, it's been a bit wet, hasn't it? So it's a little way to come, but. Yeah, Al? So if I'm doing one of the match, yeah. Hopefully not Wednesday night when they play Forest. Yes, yep. Yeah. That's always something to look for. hope for, isn't it? Three points. Any any other hopes? Or any anything that anybody's looking forward to at all this year? <laughs> okay. Hoping not for a drought, yeah. Um very good. Yeah, so Chris said, hopefully this is the year that Jesus comes back, was, uh, was what Chris is hoping for. And I think we should all be hoping for that, and that will bring better times than what we've got. So, yeah, there's lots of things we can hope for, isn't there? Um, a lot of the time, a lot of it is, is not really down to us, is it? It's sort of out of our control a bit. Um, I mean, the, the summer holidays, there always are going to happen, hopefully for you, Charlotte. Let's say extend the school term. Um, just, just hoping that the floors can be dug up. Yeah, it probably will do. I get. You could start on your own, I guess, couldn't you? If, if your dad doesn't. Well, <laughs> I expect you've got lots to do. So there, there's lots that we can hope for. I mean, Albert hoping for Southampton to win. Um, there's nothing that he can do to affect that. I don't think. I don't know. It's quite unlikely it might happen, but. <laughs> <laughs> This is coming from a Forest fan who's like, yeah, we're in the same boat. Um, so there's lots of things that we may be hopeful, we can look forward to. Maybe people have weddings that are coming up in the year or meeting up with family or going on holidays maybe. Lots of things that we can hope for. But as we look forward to the new year, whatever, that, whatever we're looking forward to, our, our main hope should be in Jesus. And I just want to read a verse from Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So we might not know what's coming up in the year ahead, but Jesus does. And we want to be putting our trust and our hope into Jesus for this coming year and he'll be able to guide us and support us for all the, the good times and the rocky times. So let's uh, follow on that by uh, singing together what a friend we have in Jesus. And the, the youngsters can head out after this song.
Okay, we're just going to uh, join together in a time of prayer now. So uh, let's just bow our heads and I'll sort of leave a little bit of time intermittently for your own um, prayers. Lord, as we come before you this morning, let us just spend a, a couple of moments in quiet, Lord, just giving thanks for the the way that you've been in our lives over the last year, Lord. No, Lord, maybe if we... We look forward to this coming year, Lord. Again, let's just spend a moment or two to offer up uh, prayers to you, Lord, for how you can maybe bless us in these coming 12 months. Lord, as we look forward to the, the new year, we no doubt know that there will be trials and temptations on the way, Lord. Help us to remember to, to always take these things to you in prayer, Lord. Help us to make prayer the, the forefront of our relationship with you, Lord, in our daily lives. And that we commit to spending time and praying to you to give thanks, uh, to ask for forgiveness, Lord. And to submit our requests as well, Lord, which we know that you will answer in the best way that you know for us, Lord. We also pray that as uh, the sort of the youth project or family and community project takes its uh, a new direction, Lord, we pray that you'd be able to guide us as churches as to how best we move forward with that, where we uh, spend our time and how we can reach out into the community, Lord. Please guide us in the decisions that are made. We pray for those who are uh, ill and not able to join us, Lord. Uh, we pray that you would be with them wherever they are and that they would feel your hand upon their lives, Lord. Just pray for Dudley and the family, Lord, as uh, they mourn the passing of Stella. We thank you for her witness in this church and in this area, Lord. And we just pray you'd uh, strengthen the family, Lord, as they uh, come to terms with that, Lord. But help us all to give thanks for Stella's life. We just pray for the the youngsters, Lord, that as they head back to school and college or uni shortly, Lord, that you'd be with them and that they'd uh, be able to stand up for you, Lord, in whatever situation they're in, not be afraid to declare you as their Lord and Saviour. We just ask all these things in your name. Amen. Okay, we're now going to have um, three readings. So if um, the very volunteers that had their arms twisted come up, thank you. Uh, the first reading is Numbers 21, verses 4 to 8. They travelled from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go around Edom, but the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There's no bread. There is no water. We detest this miserable food. 
Then the Lord sent venomous snakes amongst them. They bit the people, and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it on a pole. Then anyone who was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake lived. Second reading is from John 3, verses 14 to 17. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The final readings from Hebrews 12, verses 1 to 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Thank you. Uh, We're just going to uh, join together now to sing a next song, which is Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. Uh, Then hand over to Heather. So Thank you very much, Heather, for, for joining us this morning. Um, and also, um, thank you very much to Auntie Phyllis, who's uh, back on the piano, leading us as usual. Thank you, Auntie. But yeah, let's sing Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. Oh, good morning, everybody. It's lovely to be with you at the start of a new year. 
I want to start by apologizing for my voice. I don't know how it's coming over. But uh, I've been uh, caught in the traps of a chest infection uh, for several weeks now. And of course, it decided on Christmas that that was the time to come to a head. Um, so uh, it is rather odd. But uh, I hope you'll be able to hear what I'm saying. If I should dissolve into a paroxysm of coughing, uh, my daughter over there has the script of my sermon, and she will come and finish it for me. But uh, I think she is hoping even more than I am that that won't be necessary. But uh, it's lovely to be with you, and especially on this rather special Sunday. It's lovely, too, to be sharing the service with Phyllis. Um, the years roll by, but God still has a plan and a purpose for us, and that's very special. As we, as we step into a new year, I think many of us have got a sense of apprehension. We wonder a little bit what this year is going to be like, and that's quite understandable. Understandable with the state of the economy, the strikes that are going on that are disrupting life so much, rising prices, lack of stability in our government. We just wonder what might happen next there. Fuel prices, the struggle to keep warm that most of us became aware of when we had that cold spell recently. Some people already in the position of having to decide whether it's heat or eat. It's dreadful to have to make a choice like that. Charities are struggling. I read the other day that donations to food banks in this past couple of weeks have become increasingly less. And at the same time that they're becoming less, the demand is becoming greater. And so even charities are struggling. Climate change. It's moved from being something that uh, we all get a bit fearful about happening to realizing that it is happening. It's happening already all around us, and rather like trying to tug on something that's running away from you, we, we're not having much effect on it. It seems to be getting worse. And then there's war. War, which many have not really experienced, unless they're as old as Phyllis and I are, because we have lived in a time that's been comparatively peaceful. And yet now, all over the globe, conflict seems to be starting up again. And most particularly, of course, in Ukraine, a war that's affecting all of us in one way or another. And that, too, has awakened within our hearts and our minds the reality of what could happen if man does crazy things and allows the full power of his inventions to be released on the world. If we look too long at all this, we could fall into despair, couldn't we? But we can't hide our heads in the sand like an ostrich. We have to be aware, fully aware, of what's going on around us. We've got to be realistic. And yet, at the same time, we've got to find the right balance. While being realistic, we haven't got to spend all our time gazing at the negative things, gazing at the problems. Because for us, there is a better place, a far better place to look. When I was thinking about this, my mind went back a good many years now, went back to when I had a much stronger body. And I was having my first attempt at windsurfing on Meldon Reservoir. I set the sail gingerly, and I stepped onto my board, and I started off across the lake. It was quite windy, and there were quite a lot of little waves on the lake. And it was with some trepidation that I actually started to make my way across, thinking just how deep the water was. I looked up at the damn wall, and I thought, good gracious me, <laughs> I'm on water that deep. And I thought, oh, well, I'm a, I'm a strong swimmer, so that's okay. But uh, I had a certain amount of apprehension, a certain amount of trepidation in my heart. 
And I kept looking down at the waves and my feet. And then suddenly, a voice rang out across the lake, right over the other side. It was the instructor. And he was watching my first attempts. This is what he shouted out. He said, Heather, stop looking at your feet. Stop looking at the waves around you. You've got a little window in the sail in front of you. Look through that and look at your destination. Look where you're going. I thought, oh, right. And from that point onwards, I yes, okay, I held on firmly and I leant back into the wind, but I looked where I was going. I could still feel the water at my feet. I was aware of it. I could still feel the waves breaking over the surfboard, but I was no longer fixing my gaze on it. I was fixing my gaze on my destination, on the place where I wanted to go. Also, I thought of Peter. You remember when Jesus came walking on the water towards the disciples who were rather frightened in the storm in their boat? And they saw him coming from the distance and getting closer and closer on the water. Do you remember Peter? Peter, who was always so impetuous. Peter climbed out of the boat. Lord, if it's you, he said, bid, bid me come to you. Jesus, you can just imagine him holding out his arms and saying, come on, Peter, come on. And for a moment, everything was fine. Peter, too, was walking on the water. And then you remember what he did? He looked down. He looked at the waves. He looked at the storm. And he began to sink. And if Jesus hadn't been there close enough to reach out and hold him and lift him, <coughs> Peter doubtless would have drowned. You see, while being aware of the dangers around us, while being aware of the state that our world is in as we move into 2023, we still have to look in the right direction. And that right direction is to look to Jesus. I believe that that's what God is saying to us as we step into this new year. Don't be an ostrich. Don't hide your head in the sand and pretend everything's all right, because everything isn't all right. But remember where to look, where to fix your gaze. We heard earlier the story from Numbers of the discontent of the Israelites when Moses was leading them across the desert and towards the Promised Land. They were scared. They were hungry. They didn't like the food that was provided for them. Bit of a reflection of the world today, isn't it? Many people are scared. Many people are hungry. And many people are discontented with what they have. They vented their anger on God. That was their reaction to it. Are we ever in danger of doing that? When things go right. God, I've been your faithful servant all my life. Why are you letting this happen to me? <laughs> that was a bit like them. And the next thing they knew, they were being attacked by venomous snakes. Scripture tells us that God sent the snakes. I don't know whether you feel a bit uncomfortable about that. Perhaps you find it rather hard to equate a God of love with a God who sends snakes when people start behaving badly. I think something we need to understand is that the will of God is really two rather different things. There's the sovereign will of God. When God says, let this happen, and it happens. But there's also the permissive will of God. The permissive will of God is what happens when we misuse the wonderful gift God has given us of free will and God doesn't step in to stop the consequences. You know this with a child, don't you? If you're bringing up a child and the child uses the freedom that you've given it to do something silly, 
If the child is in mortal danger, perhaps you, you stop them. For instance, if you said to your child, you don't put your hand in the fire, it burns, and the child does, you, you, you hold it out. But there are many occasions when you let the child make a mistake because you know that they're going to learn that way. We're God's children. He's given us this freedom to choose. And sometimes we make wrong choices. And choice always has a consequence. And God doesn't always step in and stop the consequences. That's God's permissive will. And it's happening all the time in my life, in your life, when we don't keep close to God. And I think it was like that with the snakes. The people had vented their anger against God. They'd made wrong choices. Instead of choosing to be grateful for what they had, they were just thinking about what they didn't have. And so the snakes were biting and killing. And God didn't change things, but he provided a way through. That's how God acts. It's like that for you and for me. We make wrong choices. We mess up our lives again and again and and again. But God has provided a way through, and that way was on the cross. But I'm jumping ahead here. Let's go back to the snakes. God said to Moses, make a serpent out of bronze. Put it on a pole and lift it up. And tell the people when the snakes come, to look, to look up, and they will live. I don't suppose they all chose to live up, to look up. Not everybody in the world today chooses to accept what God did on the cross to look up. What happened to those who didn't look up? Well, they were bitten by the snakes and they died. Horribly, I would imagine. It was a sort of foreshadowing, wasn't it, of what was going to happen later on the cross. Our second reading it came just after Jesus had been speaking to Nicodemus. He said then quite clearly, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. Why? So that we might find life. He went on to say, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, and whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. When we think back to the children of Israel, they had conditions that are not that different to the things we face as we move into a new year. Some of them chose to accept the remedy that God had provided. Some of them chose to look up, and they lived. Some made the wrong choice, and they died. Our third reading, it was from the letter to the Hebrews where the writer likens our journey through life to the races that the Greeks loved to watch. <coughs> Excuse me. We look forward to the Olympics, but it's only once every four years. The Greeks, again and again, they would go to the games in the stadium. And the writer to the Hebrews, we're not quite sure who he was, but the writer to the Hebrews spoke of those who surrounded the runners, the great crowd of witnesses that were cheering them on. You and I are surrounded by a great crowd of witnesses. Some have already passed on, some are still here, but cheering us on, encouraging us, encouraging us to go forward on our journey through life. He spoke, too, of the athletes themselves, how they needed to throw off everything that would hinder them. And there are things that you and I need to throw off in our lives if we're really going to move forward with God. 
And he spoke of the perseverance that they needed to achieve their goal. Did you see on the news yesterday the dear man who has run 365 marathons this past year to raise money for charity? My word, what perseverance he has shown. But God isn't calling on you and me to run a marathon. He is calling on us to persevere in our journey through life. But above all, the writer to the Hebrews emphasized something very special, as well as reminding them of the crowd of witnesses who encourage us, as well as reminding us that we must throw off the things that would hinder us, as well as reminding us that we need perseverance, he said, keep your eyes upon Jesus. Just as in the, on the windsurfer on Meldon, I had to keep my eyes on my destination. Just as Peter, stepping out of the boat, had to keep his eyes not on the storm, but on Jesus. Just as the athlete, to win the race, must keep his eyes fixed on the goal where he was going. So you and I need to fix our eyes upon Jesus as we move into 2023. Let us be thankful that the Son of God was lifted up on a cross for us. If we've never done so before, let us start this year by accepting for ourselves personally what he did to make available to everybody. But because we have free will, it's not conferred on us automatically. We ourselves need to make that personal choice to accept the way through the problems of life that God has offered us in Jesus. The way to accept through the gateway to eternity. Let us fix our eyes on him day by day so that for each one of us this year, which could spell disaster, becomes instead a year of victory, personal victory, when in spite of circumstances, we move forward with him. It was about six months ago now that somebody sent me a new version of an old hymn. And it's that hymn, really, that has inspired what I felt God wanted me to say this morning. The old hymn is, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Look full on his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. But it goes on in subsequent verses to speak about what Jesus did for us on a hillside. It says, Where justice and mercy embraced. That's what happened on the cross. Justice and mercy. Two sides of the coin, which is God, which came together to provide salvation for you and for me. And then in the third verse, it goes on to speak about the resurrection and how Jesus, by rising from the dead, has promised eternal life to those of us who believe. And then it goes on, finally, to speak about the fact that Jesus will come again. God will not let this world finish in utter chaos. Jesus will return. We're going to sing <coughs> that hymn together now before we have a closing prayer. And if any of you are taken by it, as I have been, and would like a copy, there are some paper copies over there on the desk that you can pick up on your way out. And let's sing together. Turn your eyes upon Jesus.
so let us pray. Our Father, as we face an uncertain year, help us each one to face it in the certainty of your love for us, in the certainty of your ability to provide everything that we need to live the life that you have planned for us. So, Father, we step forward in faith, with our eyes fixed not on the things that surround us, but with our eyes fixed on you. And we ask that you will lead us step by step to glory in your name. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of us now and until Jesus comes or calls, and then forevermore. Amen. <laughs>